Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a very brief review of Ubuntu 20.10. Now, uh, I've decided to do reviews a little differently than the rest of the YouTube Linux community. You know, DistroTube or, you know, the Linux experiment or whatever, we go through it and they install it and show you how they installed it and go through the applications and stuff. They can do that, and that works for them. What I've decided to do is hit the microphone with my headphones. <laughs> I, still, I totally got to stop doing that. Anyways, what I've decided to do is go through and just talk about my experiences in using it. Now, because I mean, anybody can go to the Ubuntu website and you know, look at the release notes. Anybody can watch any of the dozens of YouTubers out there who went through and installed Ubuntu you know, step by step and explained what's new and all that stuff. Um, I'm not going to do that because that would be a waste of time because there are dozens of YouTubes out there that have already done that. Um, instead, like I said, instead, I'm just going to talk about my experience in using it. So the first thing I will tell you is that I'm beginning to change my uh, thoughts on GNOME. For years, GNOME has just been so slow. It's been so slow, people. It's just it's, it's so slow, it's unusable. Now, part of the reasons why it is faster for me is I've been using it mostly in VirtualBox. And in VirtualBox, um, animations aren't here. So, I'm not sure if this is the case on bare metal. I'm I haven't used it on bare metal all that much. I used it on my laptop for a little while, I but that's been ages ago, so I don't know. I don't really remember if the animation is there, but I remember it being even fast on there. So that's one thing is it used to be you have to wait for ages for the icons to unfurl in this amazingly idiotic um, animation, and it's just not. It was completely useless. <laughs> Excuse me. It's okay. Socially distancing. <laughs> Anyways, it's just a cough. Every and you can hear everybody running away from me as you speak. Anyways, uh, that's the first thing I noticed about it, about 2010 is that f for the first time in ages, GNOME is fast enough. I mean, launch times are amazing for the most part in almost every application. It just still it starts right up. Um, and it's a little slower here on this virtual machine than what I experienced when I was using it on my laptop for a little while. Um, but for the most part, it's very, very respons responsive in a way that GNOME and Ubuntu really haven't been in the past. Um, and last year, they introduced this new theme called Yaru or something like that. That may not be what it's called. I'm not sure. <laughs> but it was very inconsistent last year. So that's another thing I've noticed is that the theming this year is f is much better, you know, consistency-wise. Um, and I also believe, if I remember right here, you can also choose a dark. For the first time, I believe ever... This might have happened in April. I'm not sure because I didn't try the April April release. But you can change the dark theme without installing GNOME Tweaks. That's awesome. I mean, it is just awesome. Now, I know that there's um, still reason to install GNOME Tweaks. I know there's a... Um, evidently it doesn't come pre-installed. Um, I actually haven't done any extensions on this at all. Um, but... There's still reasons to install GNOME Tweaks. You can install different themes that way, and you can go through and install extensions that way, I believe. Um, but really, this is all you'll ever need if you like GNOME Tweaks, if you like the theme that comes with it, and that's really great. Um, I think it'd be awesome if they gave you built in the option to actually change themes here, if it was just between two or three themes, or um, just give us the, uh, the ability to change the accent what if i don't like orange what if i want this to be blue or something because blue would look really good with his accent with this you know theme um but no you can't do that and you can see how quickly it switches i mean it's just i mean it's good um it's not something that you really um 
you don't have to think about it, and that's really the way it should be. Um, so theming, uh, speed, those are the two things I've really noticed. The other big thing, the big change since the last time I've used Ubuntu, I'm not sure if this is new in 2010 or if it was 2004 that this is different, but the Ubuntu software, which is now a fork of GNOME software, is now completely all snaps, I believe. Um, but more than that, it's more fleshed out than it has ever been before. This is actually beginning to look more like a store. Whereas before, you'd come in here and some of these icons are missing. Uh, you know, if you clicked on something here, it, it wouldn't have screenshots. It was just, you know, text. It would have a place for screenshots, but they'd be empty. Um, you still can't make these any bigger, which is annoying. I mean, like, what if I want to... What if I want to, you know... Zoom in on that. I can't see that. I mean, that's that's dumb. So that's still annoying. Um, but the fact that there's now screenshots, I mean, that's great. <laughs> you know? Now, not every developer, not every program is going to have those. Um, probably the more obscure the application, probably the less likely it's going to... Like, see, this one here I'm not, doesn't have screenshots. Um, so that's still a little bit, of an, a little bit annoying. Um, my thought is that if you're gonna, if you're in the Ubuntu software, you should have a full-fledged page. That should be a requirement. Um, otherwise, you should just stick with PPAs, you know, whatever. Um, or the, or you shouldn't be able allowed to have reviews or whatever. Um, I think that that's just it, it, it would make sense because. The more fleshed out the Ubuntu software becomes, like reviews and stuff, and maybe eventually they'll bring in ability to, you know, donate to um, the developers, whatever, like Elementary does. Um, the more fleshed out it is, the better it is for new users because it looks more and more like like Apple's App Store, and really that's what you want to be compared to. Um, so, as you can see, that the speed of this is fairly impressive now. I will say when you first launch it after a reboot, it's a little slow. And switching between categories here, as you can tell, just it drags a little bit. Now I'm not sure again if this is because of I'm on a VM or if it's just that way all the time. I didn't really test that. Um, and you can you can also see how sometimes sluggish it is scrolling. Um, so this is. It's a, Ubuntu software is actually where I've spent most of my time critiquing because the screenshots that uh, not being able to make those bigger annoys me. Um, the slowness of it sometimes is annoying, um, but it's still miles away from where it used to be. It's getting really, really good, and I'm really, really impressed. Um, if you can fix now, it's just the the little details and. It's going to be good. I mean, it's going to be probably, even now, I believe, uh, 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 I would say that of the stores on all the on all the Linux distros, the Ubuntu software store is the best. Um, I don't care for elementaries, mainly because it, it's, uh, this is, I'm a big open source kind of guy, and I know that developers need to get paid. I want them to get paid. But the way the elementary the elementary store comes off as these things have to be paid for, even though you cannot pay for them, it, it always seems a little shady to me. I don't know. That's just my maybe I'll make a video on that someday. Um, but that's beside the point. I really do truly believe that Ubuntu software is the best right now, purely open source sh store. You know, whatever. Um, it's very very good it's, even with the if they can make this faster and they can make it so that you can actually you know make these things bigger so i can actually see what the you know the you know i just thought maybe if i hit the space bar it would make it bigger but it doesn't anyways that is the ubuntu software store um other than that there weren't that many great big huge in your face consumer facing features for ubuntu 2010 there just weren't. This is a fairly, um, very fairly quiet launch. Um, 
the last thing I just want to talk about is stability. It's This is probably the most stable Ubuntu I've tried. And m granted, most of my time has been spending it, in, you know, watching it or playing around with it in a, in, a, in a VM. But it's been very, very stable. I mean, usually the interim Ubuntu releases are a little wonky every once in a while because they're not long-term support and, you know, things break. But I haven't any experiences in, with pro any problems with this at all. Um, it's just been very, very good. Um, if you're into Ubuntu, I don't think that there's any reason for you not to upgrade. Even, um, now, <coughs> excuse me. The one thing I'd say against that is that if you're using the LTS, there's no reason for you to upgrade. Um, mainly because there's no new standard i mean there's no huge features that you need to have um really the only th thing you would be missing out is bleeding edge hardware support and even then that stuff's almost always backported into the lts so you're probably going to get that as well so if you're on 1910 or 1904 and you enjoy the interim ubuntu releases i'd say go and upgrade because this is really good you won't regret it um, you're not going to see much new, but it's faster. That's really where, where you're going to see your differences is that it's faster. Um, compared to the LTS now, I wouldn't say it's that much faster because the LTS was still pretty fast from what I remember. I didn't play around much with the LTS, but it was still better than any GNOME before it. Um, so anyways, that's just a real quick review. I will get better at these as I go along. I'll make more notes. Um, anyways, if you enjoyed this video... Make sure you give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down or uh, a subscribe, any of that stuff. We really do appreciate it. Our, our podcast, which is the Linux cast, which is where we get the name for the channel, if you didn't know, uh, records every Sunday. And we usually post it later that evening out here on YouTube and on Anchor. So give the, those a subscribe if you want to. You can check out all of our places to subscribe at Linux cast, the LinuxCast.org. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.